before we start. I write it down. Every time you ask us something or engage us in any way at one of the mics, are we, oh yes, you're right over there. You get to take your name and a guess at your thing and bring it to that air. We get to know each other better and somebody wins something really terrible. <laughs> that is a win, 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 win. Right? I signed a terrible thing. <laughs> yeah. And I may, put, I may even put a mint in it. Um, <laughs> I know, right? Welcome to the world's crappiest game show. I'm your host, DJ Qualls. Let me pick my number. Between 1 and 125, I'm going to pick... Has anyone ever guessed it the first try? Uh, uh, no one's ever guessed it the first try, but people have guessed it quite a bit. I'm... New Orleans, this could be your turn tonight. Woo! First. Screw Hera, screw the, screw the casino. This is way better than it's anything. You have a 1 and... Why 125? Because 100, uh, because when more people would play, it just would get more complicated to try to figure it out at the end, that extra 25. And also, I don't know, because so, sometimes things have to change. <laughs> so I changed it up. So guys, do we have people lining up right now for the World's Crappiest Game Show? Hello. Thank you. Um, I'll take this, guys. <laughs> Hi. So, when you came back to film season 15, out of the entire, like, all the scenes you were in, what was your favorite part to film that, like, just stuck with you throughout, throughout your, like, your entire life? Since season 15, it hasn't been long for my life. Right? All, <laughs> all 15 seasons or just what we did, like, six months ago? <laughs> just season 15. Just like, season, just season 15. Season? Um, I think, uh, I actually, I think it's the scene with Adam and Michael in the Men of Letters, when Adam's sitting there handcuffed and he's kind of accepting everything that's happened while Adam is kind of like moping and being all grumpy and all that. That scene was so fun to shoot uh, because they were so different, there was so much movement across the room, uh, and there was really great camera tricks going on because, you know, doing the scene with myself. Uh, so that scene was, was by far my favorite from season 15, and that'll stick with me. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guess a number? Is that how this oh, works? Yes, tell us your name and your number, please. Oh. Okay, my name is Andrea. Hey, Andrea. And uh, what numbers did you say we could choose from? One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, 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 eight. Up to 125. Up to 125. I'm going to 125. 113. 113. Oh, Andrea, 113. Right, Wrong. 
No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to tell you. Hey guys. Welcome to the World's Crappiest Game Show. What's your question? Apocalypse, but you don't get a gun or a sword. So what is your makeshift weapon that you'll be using? Makeshift weapon. That's good. I'm trying to think what my because I was on a zombie show for five years. I'm trying to think what was my my weapon was a gun. I don't get a gun or no gun, no sword. Or a sword? I do, I don't know. My legs? I, I would be running all the time. You have to, I'm telling you right now from personal experience, you have to take a stand against zombies. You really do, because they're fast walkers and slow walkers. I'm going to merge two shows together. I did a show called War of the Worlds many, many years ago, in which my weapon of choice was the thing that looked like an enormous dill pickle. And I did CGI put this green <laughs> and also, as you know, Death eats, well, very good. He likes dill pickle chips in Supernatural, so I think it's going to be dill pickle. That's a good answer. What's the number? Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 play. Play. Yeah, I want to play. Also, I will just say this. When you started with your favorite weapon would be a dill, I did not think pickle was what was coming next. My hands got a little sweaty there. I was like, where, 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 are you, where, where are you going with this, brother? It's too early in the morning to talk about. I'm used to a clean panel, you know, on my own. This is literally never been an issue. I work entirely blue, so, I mean, that would sort of fit into my panel. Most of my panels are pretty horny. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to go with uh, just a bunch of Molly cocktails. Oh, that's a good, that's a good weapon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Raise the nipple. Every zombie. Right in the nipple. So, what's your uh, what's your name and your guess? Um, I'm Seralina, and my guess is going to be seventy nine. Seralina? Yes. Yeah, that's my name. I like that. Thank you. I'm B. <laughs> and your guess was seventy nine. That was my guess. Perfect. Okay, nothing can go wrong now. All right, uh, hey guys. Thank you. Hi. My question's for all three of you. If you could have dinner with any historical figure, living or dead, who would it be and why? Ooh, that's good. That's a really good question. Thank you. Man, you guys are coming hard to work. Marie Antoinette. That's what she said. I would, I would have dinner with Marie Antoinette, but, but, but when she still had her head on, though. Like, we could have okay. I, I, well, I just... I mean, maybe it's maybe it's the gay in me and all the clothes, but I probably, yeah. We're into an app. We are who we are. That's a really hard question that I was not prepared for. It's a great question. We're keeping you on your toes. Hmm? We're keeping you on your toes here in New Orleans. Yeah, I told you. Last night was my birthday. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, John Steinbeck. We'll just smoke a bunch of cigarettes together. Around the typewriter. Oh, you shake your head no. Oh, no, John no. Steinbeck. That's a good one. I love Steinbeck. That's my favorite. No, not you. I thought you should shake my head. Yeah, that's my answer. Wow. I, I, I can't think. Uh, nobody will know this guy. Brian Clough. Oh my god, Brian Clough? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brian Clough. He's just the most, look him up, he's the most fascinating uh, sports manager yeah. that okay. yeah. broke the mold, and uh, I'd love to hear what he had to say. Who, who, who was Brian Clark? What did that uh, say? He was a uh, manager of a soccer team in England uh, during the 60s and 70s. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Brian Clark. A serious, strange answer. That's a really, really good question. And then I would have Napoleon around for dessert. Okay, so... Uh, What's your name and your... My name is Sky, it's spelled S-K-Y-E. That's my niece's name. Really? It is. It's a very uncommon name. She's good people, I bet you're good people too. I am. Um, what's your, uh, what's your guess? Um, 85. 85, thank you Sky, 85. Over here. Alright, my question's for uh, DJ Walls. So I'm Jake first, Walls. When you first started on the show, did you imagine Garv becoming as big a character as he later became to be? You know, no, brother. Um, 
Uh, I've told this before, but uh, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that I only have like 12 stories. So I will get through all of them if you around me long enough. Um, I originally turned the show down when they offered it to me. Um, because they sent me some footage. They sent me a couple episodes. And one was where Jared fell down a hole and went to hell. And I saw, I saw him. No, Jared. Jared fell down. I right? fell down a hole. Uh, a hell you weren't in this episode. <laughs> I wasn't aware of you at this time. I mean, I was in life, but not from the show. Goddamn. Um, uh, 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 so I saw these two really hot guys, and I was like, I'm not going to be on a show where I'm just not less good looking than these people, but staggeringly so. So I said, nope. And so then it got back to me that they had written the character with me in mind. And so, I know, that's so sweet. And so then I was like, well, I have to do it. And then, uh, and then Jerry was like, you know what you should do? He was like, I think this character is going to land, so you should do a convention. So right after it aired, I went to Birmingham, England and did that show. And just be outpouring of love. And like, I'd never felt that before. I, I, I'd been kind of successful in my career and I had a little bit of fame, but cold fame is so crazy. <laughs> Being referred to as this character, like, I get this a lot. Like, and it, even when I do a new job, they're like, look, Garth has a new show. Garth is doing this. Hey, Garth, I get it so much. It doesn't bother me. I mean, actually, I find it, I find it endearing. Is my zipper down? Okay. <laughs> Because it was the last panel, and somebody laughed right about that same time. Um, Darth's fly was down. Uh, but anyway, I loved it. I had no idea. And when they when they wrote that beautiful send off for me, like it was so beautiful. I and mean, it was called the hero's journey, the double meaning. And they let Garth come in and save the day. And I just thought that was it was just wonderful. And it also showed the hunters that there is a life beyond. Sexy lighting. Um, it showed the lighting changed, right? I'm not having a stroke. Um, and it showed that there's a life beyond that. And I thought it was just beautiful. So, did I answer your question? Does that mean we're in a cult right now? <laughs> the best cult in the world. But, but kind of, I think so. I mean, we don't do bad things, we build each other up. We're a cult that builds each other up. Okay, what's your name and your cast? Carl and 34. Tell me what's up. Carl, like sweet boy. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, brother. I got you. Thank you for the question. Where are you from, by the way? Just up the road, Mississippi. I can hear it all over you, brother. I can hear it. Southerners are like dogs. So we, we're like, they're like this. There's a southerner here. I can hear a southerner. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Play some Skinner! I don't remember his guess. 34. It takes a village, it really does. Hi, um, my question's kind of more of like a serious question. But, um, I was just, these before me. I know, I know that only the two of you were in, the, were in season 15, but COVID did affect all of you. So I do want to know how did shooting the show change and how did it affect you, but also what's your favorite part about being back um, after the, during COVID and now? Um, I feel like a lot didn't change. I was up there doing the episodes when it got like, we got shut down. Uh, oh, you were? You were yeah. in the middle of the shutdown? Yeah, so they were like, they were going to fly. The boys called it, like the boys called it on Friday morning, I think. And they wanted to fly me home Saturday, and I was like, nope, I'm getting on the plane now, just in case. Uh, but then when, when we went back, there was like a color-coded system, but like, it seemed, it was fine, actually. It was, it felt, it felt okay, it felt safe, we tested every day, and, and that was terrible. They sent a lady to, to do the COVID test in our hotel rooms, and she was awful at it. Is that when they had to poke it up into your brain? Push right up. But she did it with the one that you're not supposed to do it with. She put a Q-tip. She was like, here's a Q-tip up your nose. And she held it there while I was like gagging and crying. And, uh, All my thoughts are dirty. <laughs> the difference is I don't usually cry. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so it felt, it, felt, 
it felt great, it felt fine. I rapped before COVID. I, I finished in late November. So then I went home and I was actually at a bar decorating it for uh, for St. Patrick's Day when we got the word that it's my one of my best friends at the bar that the shutdown happened. And then for the first three months, I loved it. Like being at home with nowhere to be as an adult. Uh, you know, most, we've never had that before. Um, so I really liked it a lot. By month six, I somebody would somebody texts me and they're like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "A bird flew by my window today." And they're like, "Go outside." <laughs> By month nine, I was Norma Desmond in, in uh, what's that movie where she stared out the window with a turban and big jewel on Sunset Boulevard. Or, 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 yeah, yeah, I was I out of, turban out of the Yeah, I was out of my mind. I was like, you know, and now we're here. Well, I was in a, a show that finished March 13th, which was the, the day that the industry shut down in Canada. And so the, the movie is really great all the way up to the final act, which is when we accelerated the shooting and we did a special effect there. So everybody watching the movie goes, great movie, what happened at the end? <laughs> yeah, because like, we, you know, we compressed it, we got it done. And we finished just as the uh, embargo came down on the industry. And personally, the opposite of you, DJ, I, it drove me crazy. First three months of not doing anything, I, I, all I do is kind of interact with people. So I would go up like a dog, you know, hi, how are you doing today to my wife? And I'm fine, thank you. I was fine five minutes ago. And, you know, so, but I was lucky I got a, a gig in Nova Scotia, which was, uh, the Maritimes bubble, where there was no COVID, so we were able to shoot Stephen King's show, and I was very fortunate, and I managed to keep going, because most places have been pretty, most films anyway, have the resources to cope with the, the safety. Yeah, so, but y'all opened before we did, the Canadian film industry, y'all opened before we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like we were shut down for months longer than you were. That's right. We opened up sooner. But also, we had the East Coast that was unaffected yeah, by yeah. COVID. So it kept going there. And then they developed protocols that made it safe for the rest of the country to do it. So, <coughs> so, uh, so far, so good. But you know what? Most of all, it's great that we're here together now. And I'm very happy. You know, we were, you quickly, that reminded me, we were, the Supernatural was Warner Brothers guinea pig. Because we were the first Warner Brothers show back, and so they were kind of just watching us to be like, uh, <laughs> "Is it gonna work?" <laughs> they also Warner Brothers was was self-insuring, like they were doing their own completion funds, they were doing all this stuff. So when you make a project, you have to guarantee that it's going to be finished, right? Uh, everything's yeah. insured, and companies stopped insuring projects, and Warner Brothers just had they were going to self-insure, which is yes, that's it's a hard thing to do. It's almost impossible because somebody gets sick. Everybody shuts down forever. However long it takes. Um, if this ever happens again, I recommend jalapeno cheddar, Cheetos, and um, and rum. So, what's your name and your guest? Uh, Riley R I L E Y, and then um, twenty five. Perfect, Riley twenty five. I gotcha. It sounds like an instant messenger. It's your name. Hey Jake, you know we've been in a couple of things together. Have we? Yeah. Anybody know? Yeah. That's, there's another question. Really? Yeah. Tell us. I don't know these things. I forgot that Kim Rhodes and I were in Sweden. Tell, like, tell us. And I'll, I'll put your guest down. Maybe you can win the pill bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that, that we actually you know, could be in a show together and never meet. Never, never meet. even be aware that the other person is in it. That's crazy. But I, I found that out the other day. <laughs> Who's next? Hi. Uh, Hi. My question is: Out of everything that you guys have done, like, what's your favorite, like, behind-the-scenes story? It doesn't have to be supernatural. It's kind of like anything. So your question is: Out of everything we've ever done, what's our favorite sort of behind-the-scenes vibe? Yeah, like story. vibe or story, story or something funny that you know, just something that you like that sticks in your mind, but have not been behind the scenes. Well, honestly, so my favorite thing I've ever done, I did this TV show called Legit, where I played a guy with advanced stage muscular dystrophy, and I was in a wheelchair, and I could only 
uh, move two of my fingers in my neck. And so every time anything happened on the set, I would have to be like dressed or fed or whatever. So the lead of the show is a comedian named Jim Jeffries, who's famous for saying a, a brutal word that starts with a C. But he's famous for saying that, right? Anyway, so like he would, he, we got into these patterns of like when I would have to be dressed or undressed in the scene. Like during the reset, I'd be sitting there talking, and he would, he would realize that he'd be putting my clothes back on me. And I was like, this is kind of the best job I've ever had. I don't have to do anything on the show except sort of sit, sit there. But it had a lot of heart. Um, the funniest thing that happened, though, was he, like, he had to bathe me once, and he pulled me up out of the tub. And the way the camera was positioned, there was no way you couldn't see. Do you know what happens to testicles when you when you lift somebody up? Yeah. Um, I wasn't aware of this. I was not made aware of this. I have a nudity rider that was completely violated. I wasn't aware of it until the show aired, and FX didn't blur them out. So. Yes, you see my testicles. They can show balls on FX. Yeah. You can say the F word after nine now, it used to be ten, and you, you can show you balls. You can show balls for breakfast? <laughs> no, yeah, balls, balls for breakfast. <laughs> no, but you can see my you balls. Wear, you didn't wear, like, the, you know, usually when you do, like, a nude scene, they, they put, put an array of thongs and underwear no, in the trailer. No, this was, I mean, the set, there was only three actors on this show, and two of them were writers, the other one was me, and we rehearsed the whole day's work like a play. I mean, the licensing fee, like, to make that show cost $500,000 an episode. It probably cost me nothing. But it was awesome and creative, and it's the least I've ever got paid, and I would still be doing it today if I could. I just, I loved it. But we didn't think about that kind of stuff. And nobody brought it to my attention. And you can see my balls on TV. <laughs> so it's not right. my favorite thing that's ever happened, but I thought it was funny in retrospect. I, I did a film where uh, I allowed them, they, they could show my butt if they wanted to. I figured, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, go ahead, show my butt. Show it now, and, uh, before the avalanche comes. Yeah, yeah, it's still, it's, still, it's still perky, I think. Bounce a quarter off of it. Um, so, so they had the ability to show my naked butt, which I was kind of excited about. I had a shower scene with uh, this actress there for a lot of me. And uh, they didn't show my butt, which made me go, what the hell? You had your shot, and they didn't. What a cheek. <laughs> um, but, so, but nudity writers are like this. They can show the top left quadrant of the artist's buttocks no more than two inches from the side. They're really specific. Well, I was whole crack, baby. Oh, you were? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, there's no, so there's no excuse for it. No balls, though. What a bummer. <laughs> Too bad. So mine, on the Atlantic Ocean, in a show called Sea Wolf, uh, you know, they, people, producers always say, got any problems, can you ride a horse? Yeah! Can you go on the sea, not be sick? Yeah! You know, you always say this stuff. And I said, yeah, to going on the sea and never being seasick, never having a problem with it. And it was great for the first week or so of filming. And then we had the doldrums, where it was still and foggy, you couldn't see the horizon. And I played the ship's cook, and uh, I was beginning to feel a little queasy because you had no sense of really what was going on, that inner ear thing was happening, I was feeling a little weird. And they said, okay, well it's fine, we're, we're going to do today's scene up on the deck, you should be fine, we'll get some fresh air. Uh, you're going to be cutting up a fresh seal. <laughs> and what? It was actually a fresh seal that had been uh, found and appropriately arranged in front of me, and as they started the camera rolling, I started to chop, chop, looked up, ran over to the deck, <laughs> and uh, it was actually captured on film. Uh, so, but it's, it's just a little part of me running across in the background. Uh, to, and I went green, and the real humility of that was that they had to send out a special boat to pick me up and take me to shore. So I was there, you know, feeling very shamed. It's really bad. They made you cut up a seal? 
What's that? Did, did you say you cut up a seal? I did. Uh, set deck did it. They're actually preserved. There, there's, there's very strict rules about um, how you cut seal. seals. seals. <laughs> we had to have a license from the Ministry of Fisheries that it was actually a seal that had been caught up in a net and had died naturally. And right. props got hold of the seal and then they used it for the, the film. Oof. Yeah, but it, it's brutal. Pretty bad. There you go. Pete is going to be on your ass, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Whose question was that? What number? Uh, my name's Leanne, like Leanne Rhymes, and uh, my number is 123. Got you. One Leanne. Team. Got it. Got it. Okay, thank you very much. Hello. Um, Hello. I was curious, uh, which supernatural being would you guys choose to be other than what you play as? So no angel, no death, no werewolf. Garth. <laughs> I want to feel, I want to feel what it feels like. I did have the cutest little hunter coat you've ever seen. <laughs> it basically was all clothes. Um, that's, I know, uh, I mean, I think how she died, but I really, I loved Ellen so much. Yeah. So baldy, and also I like Sam so much in real life. She's probably that character. Is that a being? Can I be that? I mean, do I, have to, do I have to be like some sort of? Because I do like being a werewolf. I really do. It's it's hard. the dinner scenes are hard to film because they make you eat those gelatin cow hearts and they make you have to eat them. Um, and they're just they're not great. Gelatin cow hearts aren't the best. And then you try to you try to dip the the bread into. I wonder why we had bread at a dinner party when we. But we had bread. We tried to dip the bread into the blood and get away with it, but we couldn't. That blood is the worst taste it's in the chocolate the, blood. It's the when worst. I had to dude. stick my finger in Jared's wound and then lick it. It's awful. They're like, oh, no, it's chocolate. It's chocolate. It's chocolate. It tastes bad. I'd rather uh, use real blood. <laughs> Well, I'm very aware of being old and gnarled and a bit sad. So I think I'd like to be cute. So I think I'll be Kevin Tran. That's a good one. But in real life, I'd like to be Mark Shepard, because that means that I have better stories than anybody else. <laughs> Try telling him a story about going to Saudi Arabia once. He's met the crown prince. Um, okay, but I love him. He's one of my favorite people in the world. I have my first toddler bathroom emergency in front of him. I was carrying a toddler in a shopping mall near my house, and he was smoking a cigar in a cigar shop, and I'm running past with panic in my eyes, and he was like, first toddler bathroom emergency? I'm like, yes! He's like, there's a bathroom right over there. So I'm running this little boy over. He was a lifesaver that day. I thought you were having a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as I said it, I realized what it's yeah, happening. I had my right? first toddler bathroom emergency, but Mark Shepard was there. <laughs> he gently... Well, no. Um, so, uh, what's your name? Do we answer that? Yeah, no. All right. What would you ask? Say that again. What's your name and number? Uh, uh, Sammy. S-A-M-M-I. And I'm going to go with four. No. So the other thing I forgot to tell you about the world's crappiest game show is that you only get about 37% of your answer answered, or your question answered. I can never remember what we're talking about. Has anybody ever guessed it? Guessed it on your crappy uh, game shows? I think maybe somebody's guessed it. I mean, people get close. Y'all are all over the place. You're terrible at this. So we, we have no, there's no, there's no, uh, I don't think, danger of that, that in this. Of course, I'm kidding. I want to tell you, even if you were close. But thank you, Sammy, for I hope we answered at least ten percent of your questions. I don't remember it. <laughs> hey, hello. Hello. Um, I would like to ask if you could be a dinosaur. Which dinosaur would you be? <laughs> I am a dinosaur. <laughs> Hilarious. Hilarious. Hands down, the one in Jurassic Park. The Velociraptor. No. Do we become best friends? No. The Truck comes out and he spits the that one. Small and scary, the DJ Ball story. Like I absolutely want to do that. What dinosaur would you be? It seems like an area of expertise for you, I imagine. No, it's not. I was just 
Oh, darn. We have Jurassic Park fan in the family, I'm just curious. Oh. I'd, I'd like to be a pterodactyl. I think I... Ooh, good one. I, I like flying. I like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the, the pterodactyl. I'd like to... If, if I had another name, I, I think it would be Pteri. I like the... <laughs> Pteri, <laughs> Pteri Richards. That sounds good. It could be my new career. Awesome. Thank you. My name is Ruth and the number 11. Ruth 11. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for playing the World's Crappiest Game Show. I really like this thing. Hello. Hello. Um, has Jared and Jensen ever pulled any pranks on y'all? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, my my go-to uh, happened on my first episode. We were in the diner. And uh, Jared at that time was eating a lot of meat and was... Uh, very muscular and large, and I was in all the way tucked into the diner seat, and he was sitting here, and he ripped ass. <laughs> he may have tore his butt. It was awful. <laughs> it smelled so bad, and I couldn't leave because I'm stuck in this booth. He looks at me and goes, "I am Fortigus." <laughs> you taste it. It was what it was. <laughs> That's my prank. Uh, he didn't have to do anything but me, I did it myself. At the first pizza scene, in the rehearsals, I was actually hungry, and there was a delicious pizza there, and I ate too much in the rehearsal, so that for the shooting, you know, take 57, by the time that I got there, I was eating it, running away, spitting it in the bucket, and he was just sitting there. <laughs> so he did. Anyway. You have a rich history of running off camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Oh, now he's gone. I got my trailer fart sprayed. Like, you know, there's actually the fake fart spray that happened to me. I got my, I got mayonnaise in my door handle because I hate mayonnaise more than anything in the world. I was shooting the scene with Jared once, so I was supposed to show up, Jared and Jensen were supposed to show up. I'm dressed as like a military corporal. I was Corporal Bobby Brown. And uh, the scene is, he's looking at the coroner's report. I ask for it, he gives it to me. I look at it, give it back. Easy scene. Jared, mm -hmm. when it was my coverage, had taken the report out and on the back of it had made stick figures do terrible things to each other. <laughs> and that's what I was looking at. He didn't get me. The only time he ever got me was when I was in a coma. And he was like standing over me just off camera. And Jared's zippers are like that long. And so he just started going. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew what he was doing and I cracked up. It's the only time that they got me. I'm hard to get. Oh, and then Jensen scored at me with some like a water and a syringe. But I, he didn't make me laugh, it just made me uh, wince. I, I'm, I'm hard to get to break character. I'm a professional actor. Uh, what, uh, do we answer, we answer that? What's your name and your guess? Uh, Marcus, um, 88. Marcus, 88. Well, thank you so much, Marcus. Hello. Hello. Um, I would like to know if you guys could ask your Supernatural characters any question, like uh, for advice, what you think they'd say and what you'd ask. Another good one. Did you hear it? No. Well, I didn't hear it. Uh, what uh, question or advice would you ask as a character on the show? Right. I, I can't even hear it when you say it. What's happening to me? <laughs> Me. Me. I feel like everybody's going. I feel like everybody's going at the end of this question and doing this. So, what character or feeling would you have? <laughs> all three of you did that. Tell me what it is. It is. It's and, and, use, and use the same voice all the way through. I'm not a professional actor. Um, so <laughs> That's what I usually say. I would like to know what piece of advice you'd ask your characters for, and what you think they'd say. What piece of advice you would ask your characters for and what you think they would say all on one level? Okay, that's a really good question. I'll let y'all go first. Um, uh, mm, piece of advice. Shit. Again, I don't know if y'all heard it, but yesterday was my birthday. Uh, piece of advice. Um, how, ha, ha, how's hell, and how may I best avoid it? Um, 
you wanted to jump in here? <laughs> Go for it. Um, I, I'm stuck too, but I think given what happened to my character, the advice that I would give would be don't let anyone come near you with sharp objects. <laughs> It's your turn now, DJ. Uh, mine, would level. mine would definitely be uh, probably dental advice, right? <laughs> Different types of mouthwash or toothpaste. My character is a, a dentist. Um, you see. Well, uh, where did that question come okay. from? Over here. Uh, what was your name and your guess? Uh, my name's Madeline, and my guess is 69. <laughs> <laughs> I see you, Madeline. You came for Jake's morning. I know <laughs> But we heard that. That was the same level all the way to the end. That didn't trail off. 69! Hello. Hello. Sorry. Uh, my question is for Jake. So, we both had babies right around the same time, and I was wondering, what's your favorite part about being a dad? Having a baby. <laughs> uh, my, I've, uh, man, I love my kids so much. Congratulations to you as well. Um, I, I love I love going into his nursery after a nap uh, because that smile, that first smile you get when you walk into the room, he's so happy to know he's not being picked up and he has this like little sleepy cuddle that because he's a slow slow to wake up, uh, so I get to like hold him and cuddle him with this really sleepy cuddle. That's my that's my favorite thing. That is adorable. The so, DJ does the same thing in the morning too, which is which is <laughs> I, that's why I was used to it. Yeah. Pick him up. He's not lying. I make sure his balls are tucked in. <laughs> and that's what they call in comedy a callback. That's, that's, that was a good one, dude. Very good. Thank you. Now I don't remember what we're talking about. Name a number. Hey, what's your name and your number? Elise. E L I S E. Number 14. Thanks, Elise. You guys. I didn't mind. <laughs> Over to you. All right. Uh, my question is for you, Julian. Um, so normally whenever I'm getting new people into the show, one of the scenes I show them first is actually when death is introduced. Because it's pretty badass. And uh, so, so my question is, um, I, of course, I only see what they show us on the screen, but like, how cool is it to do that scene? Because, I mean, like brushing your shoulder and the dude just falling on the ground. <laughs> it, was, it was very cool. I, I, I really enjoyed doing it. I had no idea what it was going to look like, of course. Because it's a montage, <laughs> and I had no idea about an amazing music that was going to accompany it. You know, sometimes you hear about people having uh, music there so that they know what it's going to sound like and what the mood is. I, I didn't know that. It was my first day on set. I never worked with anybody on Supernatural. I really didn't have much of a clue. We were on the back lot uh, in Vancouver, the outside lot, uh, and it was cold. And the AD said, okay, so here's a car. I'd like to get in it and just drive around the camera, go over there, go over there, and hit your mark over there. Okay, great. And I'm a little nervous anyway. I'm going into stick shift, but that's okay. But it's like driving a boat. It's, uh, as you know, it's that huge white uh, Cadillac. And so, um, yeah, it was a little terrifying. And when I tried to steer it, it was like, <laughs> nothing happened. But it was actually very fragmented. It was a um, little bit of the ring, a little bit of the, the foot. Like, what, like a rock video, like shooting a music video. Tell him, okay, that's called the at which point, very sweet. At, at which point did you throw up? <laughs> on, the, on the boat car. Okay. <laughs> Another callback. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so it was great. I, I, and what a gift. What a gift for me for going into the next scene with, with Jensen in the pizza parlor. Uh, because at that point I'd been established so well that I didn't really have to muscle my way through it. I could just relax and have fun with that whole episode. So, yeah. Oh, I guess, since that question was directed at me, uh, what's your name and number? Uh, right, sir, that's right, that's how you do that. It's Allison and 47. 47, and what's your name? Allison. Allison. Allison, 47. 
Allison 47, thank you so much for playing the world's crappiest game show. 47. We have time for, is it four more minutes or four more questions? So we have four, so ask fast. Um, my question is for Jake. Out of Adam and Michael, who is the most fun to play? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, jeez. I like Adam. I'm team Adam. Yeah. I like, I like okay. travel. Michael didn't travel very much, but Adam traveled a lot. Yeah, name a number. Uh, my name's Michaela, and my number's 55. Michaela, 55. Dude, you're good at this. I, and I'm next! <laughs> was it 39? 31? 35. 45. I don't know. What was it? <laughs> 55. I knew there was a guy, but Y'all, there's two of them in fact. Relax, it takes a village to do this. <laughs> also, for some reason, when I'm sitting down, I can't hear as well. Uh, and over to you. Is there a role that you auditioned for that you didn't get, or one that you regret accepting? Is there a role that you didn't get? Most of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's the reality. It's a numbers game. Um, Looks like dating. Um, I screen tested against Jay Baruchel from Million Dollar Baby and should have gotten the part, and they know I should have gotten the part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But after the fact, they do know I should have gotten the part, because he couldn't do it. He's a great actor, but he just, he just didn't have the emotional depth at that point in his life to do that part. I, I and it was admitted to me by the producers. I can tell you that, um, in, uh, for me, for death, I read for pestilence. I, I read the audition for pestilence, and ended up with death. Wait, are we talking about this show? I think in general. Just general, yeah, I think. Okay. Could be anything. But I'm glad you got that off your chest about your yeah. show. Dude, I've been carrying that all these years. Every night writing angry letters to Warner Brothers. 25 years ago. Oh, no, it's not that. I'm not that old. How long do we need for the ceremony for the world's crappiest? Because uh, we need to leave about that. 30 seconds. Oh. Uh, we, we've, got one, we've got one more question. Name, name a number. Name a number. Shannon, okay, 30. Shannon, 33, I gotcha. Can we take one more? Yeah, we can. I think yeah. we should take Our one more. Our stage. Hey guys, uh, I was gonna ask, what's your favorite classic car? Classic car? <laughs> That's a good question. Or car in general. I really wanted an old Ford Ranger truck. That's what I want right now. Yeah. Oh, hey guys. I want a Volkswagen Carmen Kia convertible. I love them so much. Morris Minor. <laughs> Okay, guys! Are we ready to wrap this up? Wait, 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 number. Oh, wait. Uh, Gabby and five. Gabby five. I'm sorry, Gabby, that is not right. Um, so guys... <laughs> so let's hear the winner. The number was 72. Which means... And it's closest to the one without going over. I don't, I think, I think... 69 was the winner. Oh. Isn't it always? And that was not on purpose. How'd it go, guys? Horny. It went really horny. <laughs> Talked about DJ's balls. Okay, good. Per use. Per use. Is that, is that Maddie that has 69? Maddie, come up here. We're going to sign this for you. Yeah, 69. Hey, Maddie! You guess dirty, you guess right. That was a total accident, by the way. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much.